I'm gonna lose more subscribers today, aren't I? Remember Harry Anderson from Night Court? Or Clarence Gilliard from Matlock? Are you old enough to have watched both of those shows? Don't worry, I won't tell. If you've been waiting years to see these two duke it out as good and evil in one movie, you have a strangely specific bucket list, but you can cross it off today because this dumpster find is 2014's A Matter of Faith, starring those two and some other people that I will not name to protect the innocent. This one could be messy, but I'm clearly okay with that, so on we go. It sounds like we're starting a Nancy Drew computer game. Kinda wish we were. A little girl is throwing rocks into the lake at a park. When she finds a half dollar coin on the ground, this boy just yanks it out of her hand and walks away. And nobody does anything! The girl just looks at him kind of insulted, and both sets of parents are just like, oh, it sucks to be you, kid. Eight years later, Rachel is going off to college. We know this because... I would like to thank you all for coming to Rachel's going off to college party. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yeah, I'd say 30-ish years is a long time to wait. As she is packing up to go, Dad sticks a $50 bill in her Bible. Rachel has biology with Professor Kamen, who says he will try to entertain them if they just implement some critical thinking so they can... Have some honest intellectual discussion in here. Seems fair enough. Attend this class and I'll give you a C even if I know you're only pretending to listen to me. This is when the script told us to laugh. Rachel goes with her roommate to a club that appears to be in a church? Oh, darling, no. Jason befriends the bewildered Rachel and Professor Kamen's name comes up surprisingly quick. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Is everybody alive? That's right. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Is everybody alive? Maybe Kamen was on drugs the day Jason met him. Yep, she ended up going off to the university. Maybe it's in a town called The, so it's The University. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to answer the age-old question that has been asked by generation after generation throughout history. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? At University of The, we ask the tough questions. Of course, Rachel thinks the chicken came first, but Professor Kamen tells her that it's actually the egg. Scientific research of the fossil record has convinced most scientific minds that complex life forms evolved from simpler life forms. I would like to put a disclaimer right here that I am not a scientist. I know, shocker. Therefore, my science-related comments are gonna be fairly broad and simplistic and probably not that quotable. That being said, eggs are not simpler life forms. An egg is a, an egg. Again, not a scientist. You no, know, it's a vessel in which a zygote is growing an embryo until it grows enough where it no longer needs the egg. Or until someone eats it. Then the question becomes, which came first, the chicken or breakfast? The most basic explanation of why we know the egg came first is the fact that chickens evolved from dinosaurs, and dinosaurs were laying eggs before chickens even existed. Whatever Cayman's reasoning for this is, the egg first answer is deeply upsetting, and we know this because the music tells us it is. Jason tells his roommate Tyler and their buddy Luke that he doesn't want to see Rachel anymore because she's too prudish. Despite that, Jason gets Rachel to pull a prank on his roommate Tyler. Rachel, if you pull this off, Everybody's going to be talking about this for years. There's not a lot to talk about in the, is there? Rachel offers Tyler a hundred dollar bill if he will let her crack three eggs on his head. Then after only two, she announces that's enough and runs away with a hundred dollars. Amusing enough, I suppose, but talking about it for years? I'm kind of done now, actually. Professor Kamen has to come up with a topic for the debate coming up in October. Oh dear, what topic could a biology professor possibly come up with quickly in a Christian film? Don't jump ahead of us yet, but yeah, that one. Jason dumps Rachel, and meanwhile we stop in for a comic relief, I guess? Sounds like a waste of time to me. Yep. Tyler, the egged roommate, sees Rachel in the library. I'm really sorry about what I did. Anytime a pretty girl comes up to me and says, hey, good looking, that's, that's all I need to hear. She can crack eggs over my head anytime. Report for biology. You got Cayman? How small is the university that everybody is obsessed with one of the biology professors? Tyler asks her to go to the math department debate. And what exactly is a math department debate about? Well, the writers couldn't figure it out either because they don't say. So now Rachel is dating deadbeat Jason's roommate, Tyler, who earlier told Jason. You give up too easily making this a brilliant idea. 
Rachel goes home for the weekend and Dad finds the $50 bill he left in her Bible still in the same spot, meaning, gasp, she hasn't been reading her Bible. So he takes it back because apparently now she doesn't deserve it. Never mind, she probably has a lot of reading to do for classes with actual deadlines, but that is no excuse for Dad. He researches Professor Kamen and bitches about him to his pastor. The guy's an evolutionist and a big proponent of it, Pastor. The man does his job, oh heavens to Betsy! And there's nothing in the whole course description about biblical creation as even a plausible alternative from what I can see. Alternative facts. Shut up, Kellyanne Conway. Kamen gets into a conversation with one of the biology students about his track scholarship and his best running times. If he had run the 1500 meters in that kind of time, in the 1896 Olympics, he'd won by 30 seconds. And if he'd done the same in the 1904 Olympics, he would have won by two seconds. Do you see what's happening here? Are you serious? As we evolve, we're getting faster, stronger, smarter. Look at the technological leaps that have happened just in the last 50 years. And this is apparently convincing Rachel that evolution might be true. Despite the fact that that's not evolution. If I ran 1500 meters now, that would probably not be pretty. This is not a good example. This may be an example of a growing population and therefore more chances of there being people who can run faster, or of how over the years we've learned about nutrition and better ways to train. 50 years ago, runners were told to not drink anything, including water, because it would lead to stomach cramps. Yeah, no. Research writers ever heard of it? Oh wait, I forgot who I was talking to, Never mind. Evan hears Rachel mention she is in Cayman's class and decides to stick his Van Dyke Jr. into it. Don't you think Professor Kamen has some good concepts? He could be right. Good concepts? Way, it's not philosophy, it's a hard science based on facts and research and not... Alternative facts. Butt out, Kellyanne! By the way, Rachel, he's not right. I can't decide what's worse, a cocky guy or a blatantly wrong cocky guy. Tyler is talking to Jason and Luke about Rachel, and it turns out the whole egg cracking prank and everything after that was part of his big plan to bang Rachel. Can you not even get a girl to sleep with you? Do you not bathe or something? Mom and Dad drive up to the for dinner with Rachel, but before even going to say hello to her, Dad stops by Professor Kamen's office. I'm concerned about what you're teaching in your class. Oh dear God, professors do not get paid enough. Dad, she's like 30. Stop helicopter parenting. Well, you believe in God and the Bible? Well, yes, sir, I do. Does that help you to be at peace with yourself? Yes, it does. Well, then I think that's great, and I would encourage you to go on believing. You know, that's the first realistic and non-prickish line the writers have written yet. Christians, I have news for you. Most people, whether they be atheist or part of some other religion, don't care that you're a Christian. They do care when you, as a Christian, decide you know what's best for everyone and try to shove your beliefs and opinions on them through laws or unwanted sermons. As the kids might say, you do you, boo, and let the rest of us do ourselves. Is that really how it goes? Cayman challenges Dad to debate him on evolution versus creationism at the department debate. Rachel is embarrassed and wants Dad to say no, but he basically tells her that he needs to because he doesn't like the idea of Rachel possibly believing evolution is real. This is the good guy we're supposed to be rooting for him and he's the one flat out saying he wants to control what his daughter believes. When Cayman tells the moderator about the debate topic, the moderator decides to publicize the debate throughout town because, you know, everyone cares so much about a college debate. But I want her to know that she has my complete support at this time when she's beginning to think for herself. And we're supposed to not side with the guy letting the college kid become their own person and make their own life decisions. Okay, Cristiano brothers. Because Rachel doesn't have enough men interfering in her life, Evan finds her in the library again. How would you like it if your parent was going to debate the most popular professor on campus? Again, how small is the university? Rachel calls her dad and asks him to not do the debate. Then how does he believe the universe was created? What does he teach you in class? That there was a Big Bang or something? No, he wouldn't, because while evolution is biology, origin of life in the universe is cosmology. The Big Bang Theory has absolutely nothing to do with evolution, and if Christians want to be taken seriously in arguments, they need to learn this finally. Meanwhile, random comic relief guy found out that Cayman got a Professor Portland fired from the biology department years ago for refusing to teach evolution. And we can tell by the music that this is incriminating. Science doesn't care about your feelings. Just because you don't like parts of it doesn't make it not true. 
Listen to what it says in this high school textbook I picked up at the library. Why hasn't anyone figured out how to write natural sounding exposition? Humans came from ape-like ancestors. There is nothing supernatural about the origins of human beings. This is just a stab in the dark here, but I'm gonna guess that's not from a real textbook. Mom, I bought these flowers myself. It has nothing to do with the dead guy in the closet. Evan calls and arranges to meet Dad in person. I'm a Christian and I'm on your side. I've got some information that may prove helpful to you. They meet up in a park and Evan tells Dad about Professor Portland. The creationist Cayman got fired because Cayman is just a big meanie atheist. Dad tells Evan that this park is special. When Rachel was 10 years old, we were spending the day here together. She found a 50 cent piece lying on the ground. A boy grabbed her hand and took it from her. And I did nothing. I saw this from over there and noticed how he taunted her as he walked away and went back towards his father. And I still did nothing. Dad somehow used this as an example of how we are all filthy sinners and he believes that Rachel became a Christian that day. Hard for me to believe someone is now causing my little girl to drift away from what she's been taught. Here's an idea. Don't put so much stock into the science versus religion thing. Many Christians believe God was the catalyst for evolution and even the Big Bang. Is that entirely impossible? Because I thought with God all things are possible. Oh, hey, how'd it go? Chop and talk, honey. I'm hungry. Dad calls Professor Portland and his natural charms don't work on him. I'm not interested. Rachel finds out that Evan is encouraging Dad and confronts him. Came in as a gifted communicator only makes it seem like he's making good points. By using facts and stuff. Dad goes to visit Professor Portland, who said he is not interested, and he's still not interested, it turns out. Of course he doesn't want to relive the fact that he left crime fighting in Atlanta to be a creationist in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Your dad's the guy that's gonna debate Cayman, right? Why do you ask? He'll make your father look like a complete idiot. Does your mother look like an ape? What's your deal, man? Cayman says we all come from apes, so which one in your family was the monkey? The human genus has been around for about two and a half million years, Evan. How old do you think this kid's grandmother is? Now, who's going to make who look like a complete idiot? Yeah, that hasn't changed. Evan is convincingly just looking for a book when he overhears Tyler's buddies talk about the seducing Rachel plan. They only use her first name, but Evan knows which Rachel they're talking about, thereby shrinking the university even more. Evan meets with Rachel to tell her about Tyler, but he gets sidetracked bitching about Cayman. I'll give you a C as your final grade if you just show up without doing any work. Didn't you ever wonder about that? I mean, no other teacher does that. He teaches his evolution lies to get students to doubt their faith in God and the Bible. So now Cayman has an agenda to turn all of these good little creationists into self-thinking evolution toting atheists. You Christians really do love your conspiracy theories, don't you? You should really listen to yourself sometime. You should listen to yourself. You sound like the smuggest little prick in all of the. You can't just add Jesus to your life. You must submit your life to him. Rachel, Tyler only spends time with you because he thinks you're cute. Speaking of submission, apparently this is all a big enough crisis for Rachel to bring the literal come to Jesus moment at this point in the movie. Rachel darling, we are all very jealous of your life if this is your lowest point right here. After the next biology class, the chicken came first. Yeah, you tell him. Rachel breaks up with Tyler, which is a good thing because many times 30 year olds dating 20 year olds don't work out anyway. And now it's the debate. Dad goes first, giving an opening statement. Evolution is not scientific in the truest sense of the word since science deals with what can be observed and reproduced through experimentation. Uh, no, it still qualifies as science. You know how forensic people do sciencey things to evidence to determine who the bad guys are? It's kind of like that, but more complicated because it involves a bunch of geological dating, not that kind of dating. Look it up, you can find smarter people to explain it. The origin of life can neither be observed nor reproduced in any laboratory. Again, evolution and origin of life aren't interchangeable terms. They are two very different things. We don't know exactly how the universe started, and that's okay. We're still looking into it. That does not automatically mean that God did it. The rule isn't whoever has a random theory is automatically right. Who made this? I propose an alien named Ted made it in art class. I have an answer and you don't. That makes me right. Cayman says you can't prove any of it, but the way Cayman is swinging that microphone around, he's proving that the microphone's clearly not real. Like the true straw man in a Christian movie, Cayman also interchanges origin of life and evolution. You notice how Darwin's book is called On the Origin of Species, not On the Origin of the Ultimate Answer to Life, the Universe, and Everything. Don't panic, but it's 42. Simply put, man created God. Man created God. 
I'm 100% with Freud on this one, sir. Why do Christian movies often have atheists citing Freud, of all people? Is it a conspiracy that they cited a source that is today mostly debunked in his own field? Or plain ignorance on the part of the writers as to what they're even talking about? Hmm. Well, from the about-to-cry expression on Evan's face, I gather we're supposed to think this argument is valid. They get into the afterlife and other non-evolution versus creation topics until, plot twist, it's Professor Portland. So now they're tag-teaming on this, and Portland gives a speech. And since there is no God, then there are no rules. Once again, we're back to the Christian argument that atheists don't believe in God because they just want to sin. That would be like me getting in my car and saying, I feel like speeding and running over little old ladies, so I've decided I don't believe that cops exist. It doesn't matter if I believe cops exist or not. The fact is, if they actually do, and I know they do, there is no excuse for my behavior. And you know that the amount of information contained in the nucleus of a living cell shows that it could not have evolved from non-living chemicals. A source, please. How does that explain why some cells don't even have a nucleus while others do? God thought some things needed more information than others? Or was creation an I Love Lucy episode and some cells just slipped by him? Stars can come down and form the words in the sky, God created the world, and the evolutionists would blame it on those clever Baptists. Ha! <laughs> Nobody's claiming the Baptists are clever, thank you very much. He claims neither evolution nor God can be scientifically proven, therefore... Both these teachings then become a matter of faith. Yes, we have a title. I loved teaching my students, but one thing got in my way. Facts. We can't prove anything here tonight. Because the numbnuts who wrote this script don't understand the topic. He finishes by saying he believes in God, and apparently that is supposed to be our mic drop moment because the music tells us it is. Our next debate will be November 14th, presented by the Business Department, the discussion about government spending. Wouldn't government spending be more the economics or political science department? This must be why everybody thought a businessman as the president would be a good idea. We last see Kame in the following morning staring at his chicken. Apparently he's now reconsidering his stance, so whatever. Evan takes Rachel to the park and admits to her that he is the one who stole the half dollar from her years earlier and that his apathetic dad used the event to get Evan to become a Christian just like Rachel. Not sure if he's telling the truth or is using Using that story to pick up an older woman, but apparently they're born again buddies. The end. I think I know what the math department debate was. You see, mathematicians claim that 2 plus 2 is 4. They will tell you this is a fact because we can observe that putting two things with two other things will give us four things. But the fact is I have a 2,000 year old book that tells me 2 plus 2 is 5 despite the evidence and that it's a really good thing if I just have faith that this is the truth. Since I declare both theories to be a matter of faith, we need to stop teaching people that 2 plus 2 is 4. Sorry, but that's basically what it's like to be upset that evolution is being taught as fact and the creation story from the Bible is not even mentioned in science classes. Or shouldn't be, at least. You have faith in your God, a very strong faith that leads you to believe that it is true. That's great. Now please acknowledge the fact that your faith is based on your beliefs and opinions and not fact. Because if it were based on fact, it would cease to be faith and it would then become knowledge. If you really truly want to understand evolution, there are plenty of resources out there. There are books, there are magazines, there are documentaries, there's even YouTube videos. Crash Course, Arun Ra, Stated Clearly, this guy, and lots of other channels all have videos that range from basic evolution to more scientific explanations. And if you're going to make a movie trying to convince people that science is wrong, even a crappy movie with bad dialogue and sketchy actors with haircuts and facial hair that make you question their life choices, then do your research! This makes it painfully clear that you made your movie only to make money off of Christians who simply want to affirm the beliefs they already have and be told they will always win the day. And the rest of us know that this is just a Christian jack-off film. It also tells us that you are not actually interested in changing minds or proving why evolution shouldn't be taught in schools. You only want to profit off of the Christian persecution complex. A conspiracy theory? Hm, maybe, but it makes a hell of a lot more sense than any of yours, Cristiano brothers. Don't watch this. It'll only 
really make you sad or stupider, and neither of those are good things. Sounds like a waste of time to me. If you're wondering what plane you're on, this is Introduction to Biology. Humans came from ape-like ancestors. There is nothing supernatural about the origins of human beings. This is an opportunity for the truth. Dad, what are you doing here? So if you're on the wrong flight, this would be the time to disembark.